Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions. Welcome to this new exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to track a camera in 3D space in After Effects. So let's get started and let's take a look at the clip that we're going to be using today. I shot this over in Miami at the uh, art district that they have. It's a little bit shaky. Let me just mute that real quick. It's a little bit shaky at first, uh, but we're not going to be using that section. Uh, that might cause issues, you know, if you have a lot of motion blur, a lot of shakiness to your footage. That's definitely uh, something you want to try to avoid. But for this part right here, it's uh, steady enough for us to uh, be able to track um, our information. There are a couple of foreground elements that swing in front of the camera that might throw your uh, tracker off. Maybe it might not. So. Let's import that by uh, drag and dropping it into our project here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this clip over this icon and that's going to create a new composition of the same size and uh, duration of your clip. I'm going to double click on the layer and I'm going to click on this uh, begin bracket icon here which is pretty much sets an endpoint for your clip. And then we have all this uh, blank space that we don't really need here so I'm going to bring in my work area and I'm going to right click on it and trim comp to work area. So now we have our composition ready to go and uh, we're ready to apply our camera tracker. With the clip selected, we're going to go under animation and we're going to select track camera. Now we're going to let After Effects uh, do its magic here. You can see that it's saying analyzing in background. What that means is that you can pretty much do other things in After Effects. This is just a background task that will be running as you're doing other things. Do keep that in mind because if you don't have a lot of RAM and if your computer is a bit slow, I really recommend you not to touch anything. Like I said, this is only for slower computers, otherwise you can go ahead and do other things while this is working in the background. You can see it's pretty fast over here. We're already almost done. It's not a long clip. Now you can see it says solving for camera and boom, done. Now it might not look like much, but uh, as you can see, there are a bunch of dots on our screen. And as I scroll through here. I mean, my resolution drops quite a bit, but you can see that those dots uh, are actually sticking in place. So there's a couple of cool things that now we can do with this. We're going to use these dots in order for us to uh, create 3D objects that we can place in our scene and also to create our camera. I'm not going to go too in-depth with all of these uh, parameters. An important thing that is to note here in the advanced section, the average error says right now 0.88 pixels. Anything below or around one pixel is really good. A few things that you want to avoid when you're uh, planning on doing any kind of tracking and post is uh, definitely avoid reflections, uh, lens flares, any kind of motion blur. You want to make it as easy as possible for, uh, for After Effects. All right, so you want to get it to the point that it, it matches the perspective. Once you do that, you can just click and right click after that. And you can do, uh, you know, you have a couple different options here, but what I usually do is create solid and camera. As soon as you do that, we have a solid. And also, if you notice down here, we have a 3D camera. The real magic of this uh, camera tracker is if I go to my top view over here, you can see that I have my camera here in After Effects and I have my solid. If I scroll through here, you can see that now this camera has the exact same movement of the camera that I was holding in real life. I don't know if that makes sense, but and once you have a, a 3D tracked camera with its own animation that imitates your real life camera, you don't need to do any more tracking or messing around with any of those settings. You can now drop in 3D elements and, and uh, you need to do very little adjustments from there. So that's really nice and powerful tool to have directly into After Effects. All right, so now that we have uh, a basic understanding of how the tool works, let's go into uh, actually making some interesting stuff with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut this uh, 3D solid off. We don't really need to see that. You can see here I brought up the position for the solid. It's, you know, you have your X, Y, and Z coordinates, and that is pretty much where the ground is. So what I can even do is, you know, I can turn this back on, and uh, maybe I can rotate it a little bit to uh, match with this, the line of this building here. So let's rotate that just a little bit, maybe a little less. I can stretch this out. You know, so it's our, it's the size of the road. We type in here grid, and we're going to just throw on a grid effect on the solid so that now you can kind of get a sense of the perspective. And I can ramp preview this real quick. You 
You can see that it works and it does a really, really good job at just staying in place. It's pretty amazing. So let's bring in a couple examples of what you can do with this tool. I'm going to go under new and I'm going to create a new text. If I uh, scroll through, obviously nothing happens because this isn't a 3D layer yet. Uh, my options don't show up here. When this happens in After Effects, there's a little button down here. If you click on that, it brings up a whole different set of parameters down here. Right below this little cube here, I'm going to click on that. Whenever you see a layer with this cube, that means that that layer is 3D. So now, just with that simple click, if I uh, ramp preview this again, you can see that our text is now uh, floating in our scene. The issue with this is that it's just randomly placed in, uh, you know, in your 3D space. What if you want to position this text on this truck or on this wall or on the ground? Well, this is why we created this, uh, this track sod. We have you know, our position information. So if I bring up the position on my text layer, I can select the position of the solid, hit Command C on my keyboard to copy the, the position coordinates, select the position on my text layer, and hit Command V, which is now going to paste those coordinates onto my text layer. So now, if I scroll through, you can see that that text is sticking to the ground. So now you understand why it's uh, kind of important to create these solids in order to get a good reference of uh, where those objects are placed in 3D space. You can um, scale up your text, you can you know, move it around, and uh, bam. Pretty, uh, pretty convincing. We can you know, turn that grid off if you want to. Quick way to make shadows, you can duplicate that text. You can rotate that text down so that it, it, it's like flat with the ground. You can even make it, I don't even know, stretch it out. Um, let's make it black. And what we can do is drop down the opacity a bit. And we can just apply a fast blur to it. Uh, I'm kind of sidetracking here. just want to show you uh, how effective this tool is. Maybe that's too much. Maybe we could do five. Okay. Boom. Even more... Uh, realistic and intense with the shadow going on. But now we're going to move on to a couple more advanced things that you can do with this tool. Uh, one of the first things is I want to create a 3D light, place it back here and make like a like a fake sun. I am going to be using a third party plugin for this called optical flares. So the first things I'm going to do is create a new light. Um, I can name this a light point color can be whatever intensity you can leave that 100 doesn't really matter and click OK you can see that this light is already uh, you know affect your other 3d layers if you don't want it to affect your other 3d layers you can select that layer hit AA so a twice you can go under accept lights and turn that to off so that's that's how you do that and going back to our light right now if I scroll through here you can get an idea that it's placed pretty close to the camera so I want to push this light all the way back and the easiest way for me to do this is uh, going to active camera down here. It'll bring down this uh, drop down menu and click on top. So now we see we have our camera here. We have, uh, let's see, what is this? This is our text. This is our text shadow. So what I can do now is get that light, grab its uh, Z axis and push it back. You can zoom out, push it even further, maybe move it a little bit go back to your active camera now we see that it's uh, placed over here so we can move that around a little bit more and place it right there maybe okay so now as I scroll through you can see that that light appears to be in the clouds behind the building now what I'm going to do with this light is apply some optical flares to it so that it looks like we have a Sun um, you know, in the frame. I'm going to add a new solid. It could be any uh, color that you want. I'm going to name this solid OF for optical flares. And I'm going to go under my effects and video pilot optical flares. So you can uh, customize this flare or, you know, pick any of the presets. I'm just going to pick one of the uh, presets that I have. Click OK. And now the next step to do is you want to match this uh, position, this coordinate over here with the light. So go under positioning mode and change the source type from 2D to track lights. 
Now what I usually like to do is I like to uncheck these parameters just because I like to have full control of my optical flare from the optical flares parameters down here and I don't want them to be affected by the light parameters. Now as you remember I named this light a light for a specific reason. It's just because I wanted to show you that you can select specific lights um, from the track light options inside of the uh, optical flares plugin and you can go under name starts with change it from anything to A. Nothing changes obviously because um, our light name starts with an A but if I were to do B you can see that that disappears from there because we don't have any lights in our composition that are uh, named with B or that start with the letter B. The reason why I did this is because I might want to add another light in new light. If I click OK that second light is not going to have uh, a lens flare. Uh, if I were to rename it A you know whatever now that light is also going to have a, a flare attached to it because it starts with an A and we want to actually see it in our scene so let's set this to add and there we go we have a uh, 3D lens flare going on in our composition as you can see the building kind of goes in front of it at one point what I usually do which is the fastest thing to do in my opinion is to uh, stop watch the brightness move forward a couple of keyframes and set that to zero so now you can see what that does as soon as the sun or fake sun goes behind the building the flare disappears so there you go a couple of quick little tricks that really show the the power of the 3d camera tracker in after effects um, i use it all the time when i'm doing any kind of visual effect that has the camera moving in any sort of way it's really powerful really accurate and it's really really fast and easy to use all right guys that is it for uh, this tutorial if you did enjoy it please hit that like button i hope you found this useful and if this is your first time on my channel please hit subscribe i make a video like this every week and i'm gonna start making some action-packed shorts soon share this with your friends that definitely helps a lot my name is chris trini for chris core productions and i will see you next time